I think it's simply a question of faith. As our Lord told to the woman, the Samaritan woman, if you knew the gift of God. Mm. And so, if you knew the unspeakable gift of God, which is the body of Christ in the Eucharist, what this is, not only what this is, but who is the Holy Host. It's not a thing, right. even not as not, it's, of course it's sacred, but it is as a person, the presence of the divine person of Jesus Christ in the fullness of his divinity, as St. Paul says, in Christ dwells the plenitude of divinity, mm. bodily, bodily. So bodily, says St. Paul. Yes. And this is the Eucharist. And so if you knew who is there, you, you spontaneously, you will kneel, mm. spontaneously. And when you love someone, um, especially sometimes it happens when a young man asks to marry a girl. Mm -hmm. He kneels, he kneels down and makes the, 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 this, asks her. It is very moving because he loves her and he has respect of, mm -hmm. of this girl. Not only love, love and respect. Yes. And so this is on the human level. But the more on the supernatural level, if human people are behaving in such a moving manner, kneeling down out of love and respect, how much we should kneel down before the plenitude of divinity in the little host? And then we have the example in the Holy Scripture, um, uh, the Psalms in, invite us, uh, come, let us kneel down and adore the Lord. So many times we are uh, praying this in the Psalms. Or when you read the last book of the Holy Bible, the Apocalypse or the Revelation of St. John, there is described the heavenly uh, liturgy. And so often you can read there and the angels and the elders, they fell down on their knees, and even not only on their knees, on their faces. They made a full prostration. Before whom? Before God and the Lamb. Yes. Lamb. Yes. And the Lamb is our Lord right. in the Holy Eucharist, because before we receive the Eucharist, the priest is saying, Behold the Lamb of God. This is the same Lamb as is now in the heavenly Jerusalem. And so the angels are giving us an example. Why we do not imitate examples which we have in the Holy Scripture even, uh, besides the moving examples from uh, people on, or from the common life, I mean from the natural life. Yes. And so, I repeat, if you knew or if you know that this gift we, you will instantaneously behave in another way. You will kneel. You will make your little. And you will not say, oh, now I am an adult mm -hmm. and I can take myself to food and put myself, I am not a baby. Mm -hmm. But this is wrong. This is, this is contrary to the spirit of Jesus and the spirit of the gospel. Because Jesus Christ said, not if you will not become adults, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. The contrary, if you will not become like children. And St. Peter, in one of his letters, he is saying, like newborn infants, babes, you should desire the milk. This is the, the, the life of Christ and the more himself, like newborn infants. But a newborn infant, he is not able to, to take himself the food. The mother or the father is putting to the food with much love to the child in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Now, there's been a lot of hype about the coronavirus 
And we've seen in Europe, also in America, perhaps other places in the world, bishops, priests saying uh, some canceling confessions, uh, but also saying no communion on the tongue because of this virus. As a bishop, can you speak uh, to mm -hmm. that new situation that's happening right now? First, I would say this is first a lack of faith mm -hmm. on behalf of these bishops. And uh, secondly, it is an abuse of, of authority. Uh, actually, when you examine carefully these aspects, the communion in hand is more dangerous than communion uh, on the tongue. Why? And there are studies, and uh, we can quote some studies of research, because the palm of the hand and the fingers, they are full of bacteria, I mean, mm -hmm. these and um, other, even a virus. And then they take with their two fingers the host and they impress in the host mm. the bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then the holy host is becoming a means of transportation of bacteria inside the mouth and the body. Mm -hmm. This is more dangerous, mm -hmm. even more dangerous, even the contrary. During the cor cor coronavirus epidemic, the bishops should forbid communion in hand. I receive the Eucharist, I don't for years, the priest never touches my tongue. Uh, I have also the same experience. In Kazakhstan, we have only communion on the tongue. Yes. I, I almost don't remember when when I touched the tongue. Yes. Very rarely, extremely rarely. Yes. And so, um, and therefore, uh, there is reduced danger and risk. And then we have to also to bear in mind that this is the body of Christ. It is not a simple bread. Mm -hmm. which, this is the body of Christ. And to really to believe that our Lord is here and he will not, when we receive him reverently, uh, allows that we will be, um, uh, that then it will be, be um, infected by some virus. Mm -hmm. For example, the Byzantine church, they are giving Holy Communion with a spoon. Yes. With one spoon for all. Yes. And they have, uh, there was no reports in the Byzantine church of, of contagion. Yes. Because of Holy Communion. Yes. And if there is really a danger, I mean, a very serious danger, then we can make spiritual communion. It's also, it's also helpful and uh, gives us many graces. Yeah, during the during the Black Plague, priests, thousands and thousands of priests were going and giving extreme unction, last rites, communion on the tongue to all of these victims of the plague. Yes, that's this was uh, a still, priest is called to this. Yes, it was still a time the time of faith. Mm -hmm. 